In this video, I'll show you how you can use the show and hide commands in advanced actions. Okay, let's get started here. So I got a message from Khalid. Khalid uh, was saying that uh, they were confused and can't find CP command related to show nor hide an element. The only show available is play bar. And uh, it looks like there's some more here. Let's just see. Uh, talking about Captivate 9.0. Okay, perfect. Well, let me show you, Khalid, what, what I know about the show and hide commands. And hopefully uh, from that you can, you can manage to see how it applies to your unique situation. Um, I often use the show or hide commands um, when I want to let's say hide an object from view from the users, from my learners, uh, because I want them to usually do something else first, or I don't want them to proceed forward. Here's an example of that. I have uh, a very simple slide created here, and the, the, the big button in the middle there is click here to read the policy. So before I want them to proceed with the rest of the course, and proceeding with the rest of the course means clicking the next button, I want to make sure that they read the policy. Now, in actual fact, I can't actually control whether someone reads something, but I can make sure that they open the document. That much I can ensure. Um, and the way I'm going to do that, I'm going to do do that with uh, with two actions. One of them an, an advanced standard action, and the other one will be an on enter action as well. So when the user comes to this page, now they may be returning to this page from previously visiting it, I want to make sure that the next button is always hidden. So I'm going to select the, the next button and just point out to you uh, that the next button is labeled something that, that you can easily remember. I've called it next underscore button underscore zero one. Presumably, I might use this type of button elsewhere. So uh, the 01, this is the first instance of that particular style of button. Now, what I want to do is on enter, I want to hide. And in this case, I just need to find the next button. There it is. And uh, we're going to uncheck continue playing the project. When you check off continue playing the project, if there's a pause on screen, it's going to unpause that and keep playing your project. So we're just going to hide the next button every time a user comes into this page here. Now, what we will what we'll be left with is just one button in the middle. Click here to to read the policy, and once they've clicked that button and opened the policy in a new window, let's take a look at that. So I've got uh, on success open URL or file. And I've stored this particular policy document uh, on the web somewhere. Uh, maybe it's on a company intranet or perhaps it's on a Dropbox account like what I'm using. And I don't want to continue playing the project. And incidentally, I always encourage you when you're opening up external documents from within your e-learning course to always do it in a new window. Uh, if you do it in the current window, then the user has to use the browser back button to return to the course and that can lead to unpredicted events or unpredicted results. So um, best to open it a new window, let them view the, the document and then close that window and return to the course. So that's all set up. But what we want to do is we want to change this because this is just a single action that we're, we're taking here. We want to turn this into two actions because we want to unhide the next button as well. So we're going to change this to execute advanced actions. And we don't have any scripts already created, but we're going to create one right now. And this is going to be a standard action. And this will be uh, open underscore policy document. That's the main reason we're, we're doing this is so that we can open the policy document, but we're also going to unhide that next button as well. So let's uh, open URL or file. I'm going to paste in that uh, 
that location. Um, if you are using this functionality to store a local PDF file, you're probably going to want to get rid of the um, all the location information that will come before the file name and make sure that you place that object, that, that item, whether it's a PDF file, a Word document, whatever, uh, within your published course. So if you've created a SCORM package, AICC package, or XAPI package, make sure that PDF goes in that package as well. Um, so, and we want to select that it's going to open in a new window. So there we go. We've got the, the, the functionality of opening our policy document. But the one thing we want to add here, very simple, is we want to show our next button underscore zero one. So there's our advanced action. Very simple, two lines of, of code, if you will. Uh, we're opening the document, but we're allowing them to continue once they've opened the document by revealing the next button. So let's save this as an action and we'll close this and make sure that, yep, that's set to open policy document. We'll allow them infinite attempts. Uh, again, let's just review here on, on, um, on enter of this slide. We're hiding the next button. The advanced action will show the policy document and also show the next button. So this should work quite well. Let's just do a preview in browser so we can see it uh, running as it should be. So as you can see, we've got our page set up. The only thing users can do, there's no next button here. Presumably you would hide the, uh, the play bar controls as well. But the only thing for them to do is to click here to read the policy. There's our policy. We can close that window, return to the course, and now our next button is available and it allows the users to continue with the rest of the course. Guys, if you like the videos that I'm producing for you, I encourage you to subscribe to my channel. And if you thought this video was useful or helpful, go ahead and give me a thumbs up.